Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome to lesson number four of our Planet Coaster Realism Top Tips series. Thank you so much for coming along today. And in this episode, we are looking at the four meter coaster method. So I reckon we waste no time and get straight into it. So the four meter method then is a way that you can build your roller coasters using sections of track that are four meters long between the top of your lift hill and the beginning of your brake run. And the reason we do that is so that you have absolute control over how your coaster layout is and how it looks. And you can create some really realistic elements using it. And I don't actually know who came up with the original concept. I just know I watched it on a video from Silverette back in the day. So uh, thanks to him for, for doing that original video. All of the coasters that I used in Raygate Lake all use this same method as well. So I've chosen coaster at random. It's just the flawless coaster, nothing nothing special. Put in a modest lift hill. Um, and I've already set the, the coaster length to be four meters and I've got my angle snap set to 11.25 degrees. I mean, you can have more or you can have zero if, if you want absolute control over your, uh, over your shaping. But I tend to use 11.25 just because it gives me a bit more control. So what you're going to do is you're going to build your whole coaster using this. Um, it takes a lot of time, not going to lie. It can be quite laborious. It can take quite a long time to do it, but I promise it's worth it at the end. And so you just continue to build your, your layout as you do. Um, you're going to get some really horrible, horrible janky angles. So like, for example, I'm not going for realism in this layout, guys. Uh, if I then start to bank this, uh, I need to select whether I'm going to have any kind of heartline rolling and we'll come on to that shortly. Uh, so I'm just going to up this to uh, between one and two, one and two meters um, and place a section. Then I'm going to continue to bank it. So I'm banking it over two sections, but now I'm going to start to turn it. And now I'm going to continue that banking and turn it some more. And you can see that we're now starting to get some really horrible like angles and some horrible jank going on but don't panic this is all going to get fixed um so i'm just going to bring this back down again back down again like this so you can see it uh like i say i'm not going for realism here guys i'm just going for showing you how this works um and then if we just go up and go up 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 so you're going to build your, your whole coaster using this method so it's, it's reminiscent actually of roller coaster tycoon three days right when you used to build your coasters like this but the difference is you can now place your track pieces wherever wherever you want so once you've finished your entire your entire layout what you're then going to do is take uh, four sections of track so one two three four and you're going to smooth it and then you're going to move across one node and smooth it you're going to move across the next node and smooth it and the next node and smooth it and you're going to keep going until you reach the end of your coaster so this is the bit that's going to take time like a lot of time a lot of time uh, so we're going to keep going keep going and what you'll see is all of your jank that you started to put in by using this this method is now going to start to be removed as you go along so i'll just show you this like this like this, like this. So you can see it's starting to smooth out now. And when you reach the end of your roller coaster, or an inversion, or a mid-course brake run, whichever is like your natural stopping point, what you're then going to do is go backwards. So you're going to repeat the process, and you're going to repeat it backwards. Like so, like so, like so. Now, when you get to the end, you can see how, how fiddly it can be sometimes. Uh, like so, like so. Come on, there we go. Okay, so I've got to the I've got to the end of end of my track, and you can see it's still it's better. Like I'm starting to see some of that profile shaping now. So you can see this is a nice swooping S bend. Um, so you've got that realism element to it, but it's still going to be really jank. It's still going to be pretty rough. So what you're going to need to do is repeat that process. And the number of times that you need to repeat that process uh, is going to vary between coasters, right? So some coasters, you might be lucky, you're going to get two. You get Two passes will be enough. Some of them, like some of the Raygate Lake ones, took me eight passes to do. Uh, it's just down to how the coaster feels. It's just down to how you want it to look and making sure that everything is as you want it. Uh, so the coaster method, to sum that up, build your coaster all in one go. And then take four sections of track individually, smooth them, move along a node, 
smooth it, move along the node, smooth it. When you get to the end of your coaster, you then repeat the process backwards and you repeat those processes until such time that you are happy enough with your coaster layout. And you can normally tell if it's done by going into the ride cam, riding the coaster, and if it's smooth, great, you're finished. And if it's not smooth in places, then just go back over it. So that's the four meter method in principle. Let's talk a little bit about inline twists, heartline rolling. Here's a question for you. What's the difference between this inversion and this inversion? They both do the same thing, right? So the difference is heartline rolling. So when engineers are designing coasters, they'll design the coaster with a couple of things in mind, primarily whether any kind of rolling of the track or movement of the track, whether that be through an inversion or through a bend or through twists and turns, they decide whether they're going to uh, have the whole thing centered around your feet or your head if it's an inverted coaster or around your heart. Now, Placing coasters and rolling them around your heart is more comfortable for a rider because it doesn't displace the blood as much as an inline twist would do if you think that you've got rush of blood to the head and rush of blood to the feet. But it doesn't mean to say that you can't use this kind of, kind of roll, but it's a very tight inline twist. So for this one, you've got... It's uh, the same track, the same track level, and it will just twist around essentially the rider's feet, meaning that your head is the center point coming out here. So if you imagine that your feet remain in the same place, but your head is coming right the way around in a, in a big spiral. If we come back down then to this one here, the opposite is true. So now your feet and your head uh, are, are rotating, but your heart stays in the same place. So uh, it's a much more comfortable, much more comfortable experience. And as you can see, this is your this is your typical heartline heartline rolling. So how do I do that? How how do we actually go ahead and create something? So I'm just going to edit this track. I've done another coaster, uh, and I've set the under the utility settings. I've set the banking offset to somewhere between one and two meters, and I set it at this level because if I'm then going to use the four meter method. As I'm smoothing, it's going to reduce some of the banking offset. It's going to reduce some of the height. It essentially makes it a lot smoother. So you have to overcompensate for what you're trying to achieve to then rein it back when you're doing the smoothing smoothing technique. So set my angle snap back to 11.25, and I've got my got my roll. And so I'm, all I'm going to do here is set this out to 45 degrees. Then I'm going to do to 90. We do it another 45 to 135, and now we're completely upside down. And then I just reverse the process 135, 90, 45, 0, and then back through. So, this is the jank that I was talking about. Can you imagine riding this in real life? Horrible. Uh, <laughs> so this is where the four meter method then really comes into its own. So we take the, the four sections and we go to smooth all like this. Smooth all. Smooth all. We keep going, keep going, keep going. And you can see that the track is now starting to smooth itself out. Um, and then when we go backwards, like this, keep going, keep going, there we go. So we're back at the back of the beginning and then you just repeat that process for four or five times, uh, depending on the actual coaster itself. But now you've got yourself a really nice barrel roll. Um, let me just take the... AI away. So you've got, apart from, ignore it, it needs more smoothing. Uh, it looks like, um, is it High Roller in Vegas? <laughs> the inversion on that. Uh, yeah, so you've now got this awesome, awesome banking. But remember though, you are able to use a non heartline rolled twist on things like inverted coasters because you the, the riders are below the track, right? So you, you've got no real way of rotating people around their hearts. So everything is around head and feet so you would tend to have no banking offset on on your inverted coasters and your flying coasters to an extent and also your wing coasters as well um because you've got no way of rolling around somebody's heart but on things where you've got normal trains sit down trains then you would heartline roll so that's a barrel roll what about a zero g roll well zero g rolls are actually very similar to a barrel roll the difference is you have to enter and leave it on an incline and a decline. So here's my track. 
all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up to around 45 degrees. Again, these angles, they're completely up to you. It's however you feel the coaster needs to be, right? It's its completely up to you. Um, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down to 35 degrees and then bring the roll round to 45 degrees. And I'm going to make sure in my utility settings that I've got it set somewhere between 1 and 2 degrees. Like so. Bring it down to 22.5 and 90, then down to 11.5 and 35, and then down and 180, and then down and reverse the process. 135 and down and 90, and down and 45, and then lastly down and it's into the exit, like so. Then if I wanted to level it off, then I just level it off in the same way. Like that. And then I then go ahead and smooth it. Um, and remember, like I say, the angle of ascent and descent in and out of the zero G roll is completely up to you. If you wanted to have it shallower, you can have it shallower. If you wanted it steeper, you can have it steeper. It all depends on the speed of your roller coaster and also how smoothly you're, you're going in. Um, but... That's essentially the <laughs> the pre-smoothed version of your zero G roll, um, and so you can see now that the riders are going to enter the inversion. They're going to be rotated around their hearts, and then they're going to come back out the other side. Um, and what you're looking for, and I, I use this terminology quite a lot, and you kind of see it in in this view here, uh, is the ribbon effect. So what you're looking for is for the track to make an, a, like a, a ribbon. You know, like the type of ribbons that you try uh, tie around trees as memorials and stuff. That's the kind of shape that you're going for. It's going to come into the inversion, spin around itself and come out. And from the top, it should look like a bit of a zigzag. Um, although, be it, this is very messy because we haven't smoothed this one. But uh, you're looking for it to be a bit of a zigzag like this. Um, it's almost a corkscrew, but it's entering... And exiting on the same plane. So, what about an Immelman? Immelmans, if that's the right way of pronouncing it, are my favourite inversion type in Planet Coaster because they're actually quite fun to build. And if you don't know what it is, it's where you go into a half loop and then you exit via a zero G roll. It was made famous by World War One pilots who used to use that maneuver to escape uh, combat and what well, after they finished bombing and everything. So it's actually supposed to replicate that kind of maneuver. So. You need to be careful how you're going to design these based on the coaster type that you've got. B&Ms, for example, use a teardrop, teardrop shape at the top, whereas a Eurofighter will use um, a smooth curve around. So if you were to join the two Immelmans together, you'd end up with a circle. They don't use the teardrop at the top. So here's a B&M one. Uh, I've got my off my banking offset set to one meter, uh, but this time I set my angle snap to 15 degrees. And this is because you want to raise into the half loop quite quickly because you're going to lose momentum quite quickly. So 11.25 draws out that half loop too quickly. And uh, 22.5 for this kind of coaster is probably a little bit too much, but you need to uh, uh, edit your angle snap based on the momentum of the coaster right but this principle remains the same so i'm going to go through the the motions and i'm going to go up one notch every single time so that i end up at complete vertical uh so if this was 22 degrees then you would see that the angle of ascent would be much steeper and if it was 11.25 it would be much narrower so i've got to the point then where i'm completely vertical so i'm starting my starting my half loop now i need to think about how i'm going to exit out of this and there are a couple of ways that you can achieve this and different creators will tell you to do things different in different ways it's down to your own preference really this is the way that i personally do it so with the nimbleman we need to come up and if we carried on going around now we would actually exit out the same way we came in but we we need the track to come out at an angle this way or come out this way depending on how your coaster is being designed so I'm going to rotate the track around so that it's going to exit and now I'm going to flip from one notch to two notches like so I do that for one and now I need to straighten the track out again and then bring it down two more like that and two more again so we are now completely upside down. And there's there's the shaping 
that we're kind of going for. Now, don't don't panic because your smoothing is going to make this look more natural. Uh, the smoothing tool will work out the correct angles that you're going to need in this kind of in this kind of area. So don't panic about the shaping just yet. So what we now need to do is exit the moment. So I'm going to now revert back to one notch. And I'm going to then decide whether I want to completely invert my riders upside down or do I want it to be more of a, a side wave turn feeling. So if I'm taking my riders completely upside down, I'm going to go this way because you can now see that there's a full rotation in the track. Um, but if it's more of a sidewinder kind of um, air wave turn, if that's the right phrase, uh, then I'm going to come around this way instead and then there's no longer the the complete rotation so i'm gonna, just going to go this way and i'm going to go to about 150 degrees and i'm going to go down one more notch and i'm going to come down this way to about 120 and i'm going to come down one more and now we're at the the complete angle of descent so we're at 45 degrees you could go one more if you wanted to it depends how steep you wanted to exit um but i'm going to keep mine to 45 degrees and then I'm just going to finish it off like this and draw out the the inversion itself and then complete your descent this way and then start to flatten it out again and at this point by the way you probably could go back to using 11.25 so that you're not so you're not so steep not so intense with your with your angles uh, so there we go and then that's the kind of shape that you would be looking for uh, for your flawless coaster that's how it looks from the side looks a bit weird at the moment right and then <laughs> that's how it looks from the top so let's go ahead and smooth that I decided to do this smoothing off camera and I'm glad because it was 16 minutes <laughs> that's not good content uh, but this has been now been done six times uh, so I've gone through gone around it six times you can now see it's a much nicer shape it's a much smoother shape and of course this looks still looks weird because it's got no supports but you typically would have a support here and a support around this kind of area um, and I'm not going to put that in but this is the kind of shaping that you're going for then when it comes to the flawless this really sort of smoother incline into a completely vertical then the teardrop shape and then it just smooths back out as it does the transition out and then this is what it looks like let's just get rid of the menu uh, and then this is what it looks like from the top so you sort of come in completely straight you come up and then you vertical out now just a note on this though because you obviously know we've used heartline rolling on this because it's a flawless coaster if you're using the dive trains that are 10 wide and also the uh, wing coaster trains, you don't use heartline rolling. You just have it doing the maneuver without any heartline rolling. Reason being, you can't roll those riders around their hearts because they're essentially sitting either side of the track. So if you're going for that realistic aspect, then don't heartline roll your wing coasters and your dive coasters where you're using the wide trains. Um, if you're using the dive coaster uh, method but you're swapping out the trains for the flawless ones so that you can mimic the smaller dive coaster trains you know think of like oblivion black hole at gardaland then you would use heartline rolling it's just a bit of a bit of a caveat on that one so that's the immerman turns let's have a look at doing actual turnarounds wait a minute a turnaround isn't an inversion no you're right it's not but it's a brilliant uh, example of the four meter method in action because B&Ms are designed in such a way that they can throw people around the track really quickly, really easily. And in order to be able to really replicate that kind of feeling, you need the four meter method to do that. So let's do one. If you're not familiar with what these turnarounds are, it's where we're going to go up a hill on a slight banking going around this way. We're then gonna level out really quickly, go around a really tight bend, and then we're gonna exit out underneath where we've just been. And the idea is that you want almost the train to feel like it's going to stall at the top so you can then pivot really quickly on its internal axis and then straight out of the drop. Let's put that into action. Now remember, you are going to need to adjust some of this based on the speed of your coaster. So please don't try and do this kind of build if you're throwing it round the track at massive high speed because your fear and excitement and whatever are just going to be off the charts. It'll just be ridiculous. So I'm just showing you how to shape it. Uh, you'll need to adjust it for your own for your own coaster method. So we're coming out of the moment here. 
and I'm going to set my banking to 22 degrees because we're going to need to start coming around this way. Uh, and I'm going to put my height to 11.25 degrees, but my uh, turn is still zero. So I'm just pre-banking at the moment. Now I'm going to set my banking to 45 degrees. Now remember, I need to overcompensate for this uh, because the smoothing tool is going to take out a lot of this, right? So you may even consider doing it to 56. It depends on how your smoothing tool is going to behave, but 45 should be enough for this one. I'm going to take it up to 22 degrees in height and now I'm going to start my turn. So it's now going to start turning around. I'm going to continue with the same banking and I'm going to continue with the same turn, but I'm going to take it up to 33 degrees. So what we're now doing is killing some of the momentum of the train. I'm going to do one more and now we need to start leveling out. So I'm going to bring my banking back round to 22 degrees, but I'm still going to keep my turn at 11 degrees and my height at 33 degrees. Now I'm going to put it to zero on the banking, zero on the turn, and I'm going to start to level out my track. So I'm going to take this down to 22 degrees and then I'm going to go down to 11 degrees. But now I need to start the banking going in to the left hand turn. So I start by 22 degrees. Now I'm going to bring it down level. And now I'm going to do a bit more harsh banking. Remember, I overcompensate for the smoothing tool. So I'm going to take this to 56 degrees. And now I'm going to start my turn, 11.25 degrees. I'm now going to make my turn a little bit harsher at 22 degrees. But I'm going to keep my height at zero and my banking at 56. I'm going to take this around to about 90 degrees. Again, this depends on the coaster you're building and the space that you've got, but typically take it around to about 90 degrees and then make your turn even harsher. Now, the reason that you do this is because it's supposed to feel like it pivots pivots on, a, on the spot at the top. So by this point, the coaster's lost, lost enough momentum uh, to be able to do a bit of a tighter turn and you get some good forces here. Now, at this point, it depends on the shaping of the track that you want and how you want to exit. Do you want to exit alongside this piece of track here or do you want to exit out at an angle here? So this is going to, again, going to need a little bit of editing on your part just to make this work. So I've come around this way and I'm tightly turned. I'm going to come down to 11 degrees and I'm going to keep it at 33 or minus 33 and my banking at 56. Then I'm going to come down again to 22 still maintaining this but now I need to start leveling out so at this point I'm going to take my banking to 33 and I'm going to keep my turn at 33 but now I need to bring my uh, height down to 33 then I'm going to completely make this level I'm going to make my turn still 11.25 degrees for reasons that you'll see in a minute and then I'm going to bring my height down to 45. That's my maximum angle of descent I'm going to use on this turnaround. Uh, then I need to just make sure that everything is now level. So uh, I've got zero banking, I'm 45 degrees descent, and I'm no longer turning. And then I'm just going to exit out this way. And then I'm just going to smoothly make an exit strategy as it smooths out towards the bottom towards the crest no the crest is the top isn't it towards the bottom uh, so this is what you've now got as a turnaround let me just come out of here um, this is what we've now got as a turnaround so we're coming out of the emelman we're banking slightly to the uh, to the left we get to the top and we almost pivot on the spot and we're going to come down and we're going to exit exit out so let me smooth this out and i'll show you what it looks like smoothed I also just went ahead and made this a full coaster so that I could show you with the ghost of the first coaster in the background, just so I can show you how it's traveling through the actual inversions. Um, and you can see now that I've smoothed this out quite nicely. Um, this harsh banking we had here has all but disappeared through the smoothing tool. And I would probably want to do another maybe three or four passes on this just to make it properly smooth. But you now get the idea of, of how this is traveling through. So it comes banking round to the right, up to the top, and then it's swift, sharp turn to the left and then straight into a into another drop. Um, and so that's the kind of shaping that you'd be going for. Remember, this is going to look weird because it's got no supports. Um, but this is what you're what you're essentially trying to achieve. So you can see how the train travels through. Very snappy, very quick.
very transition and then straight into a drop and it just then underneath the uh, underneath the entrance entrance track so what about airtime hills then how do they work so there's two airtime hills that you can use when designing roller coasters one that's called an ejector airtime and one that's called floater airtime and the ejector airtime is so called because it feels like you're being thrown out of your seat and that's because the train is descending quicker than you can adjust to your surroundings so it's forcing you down and your restraints pull you down whereas the floater airtime tends to be at the top of bigger hills where the train is coming to a slow and then a reascension down the, the other side so you get that sort of slowdown and acceleration and that's what causes that feeling now airtime hills pretty much use a parabolic way of doing it so uh, parab parabola is a shape that looks a little bit like this where it ascends really quickly it will then crest quite smoothly and then descends really quickly now ejector airtime hills tend to be much shallower than this but still use the same principle so they would tend to be something a little bit like this where your uh, your train is going to descend down here quicker than you can adjust your surroundings whereas this is more drawn out and long so how do we do that on planet coaster so i'm going to come back into our uh, flawless coaster and again, the principle of doing this is pretty much the same for every coaster type that you do. And you're going to need to adjust this for your own preferences and how you want the coaster to behave. So this is how I personally do it. So I'm going to take my coaster to start with up to 56 degrees. I quite like that, that angle of ascent and descent. But again, you can change that depending on your taste. 45 works just as well as does steeper. So I'm going to take mine to 56 and what I'm then going to do is uh, start bringing it down into 45. Then I bring it down one more time to 33. And now I need to crest the hill quite quickly. So I'm going to bring it down to 11.5. And then I'm going to bring it down to minus 11.5. And then I'm going to bring it back down to minus 33. And then one more to 45. And one more to 56 and then I'm just going to level this out in the opposite way that I entered uh, so one two three four five so this would generate a floater airtime hill um well uh, it might not actually because it's quite quite short uh, if it were taller this would be a floater airtime hill because you're going to come to a quick ascent the train's going to lose a lot of speed very quickly and then it's going to crest the hill quickly and then it's going to descend very quickly again um, so this is going to create the floater airtime around about these this section from here to around about here would be where you'd start to fill that airtime now if i wanted to do a uh, an ejector airtime it's a similar principle but shallower angles shallower angles so i'd bring it potentially up to uh, 11 maybe not really as much as 22 bring it up for a couple of segments shallow it off like so and then bring it down again and again Uh, probably one more actually and then level it off again and so what you've now got is a really harsh hill uh, taken at a lot of speed where you're going to hit this point and the train's going to drop but you're still readjusting to your surroundings and your situation and your restraints are going to force you down and therefore you're going to continue traveling this way <laughs> but your train's going this way uh, so that's where the the ejector comes from um this is probably you, you might need to make this a little bit bigger and this is probably going to be way too fast for this coaster but let's check out how this rides after i smoothed it out all right so the train's going to come around the corner here and then it's going to enter straight into the airtime hill there and then into the ejector one on the right hand on the left hand side um, but you can see this one's probably taking it a little bit too fast so this would probably be end up being more ejector time than it would be floater uh, and that's fine if you do need to make any changes to the track then you can just go ahead select your uh, nodes your segments and make the change that you want knowing full well that this is going to create some really awful and weird 
transitions and that's no problem because all you then do is you take your four and you just re-smooth and the because you're using it every four meters the game will then start to work out how the track should be because you're smoothing four sections at a time um, I don't recommend doing this on airtime hills, as you can see. <laughs> but you can now see that it's cresting the uh, the airtime hill a lot shallower and a lot smoother and at a slower speed as well. Um, and then all you do is you just go back through the smoothing process, your four or five passes, um, and that will then correct that. Likewise with any curves and anything like your, your Immelmans, you don't have to delete everything and start again if you realise that you've got the wrong shaping or profile. You can just twist and morph and then allow the smoothing to do the rest, if that's what you want to do. Like that. That's not perfect, of course, but it gives you the idea of of the art of the possible and then into your airtime hill so now i'm thinking of of this one this is probably uh, this airtime hill is now probably too narrow um you would want to spread this over slightly wider and that's where you're going to start to consider whether you need to use longer than four meters let's have a look at that yep you guessed it hypers and gigas uh so this is typically somewhere between hyper and giga in terms of height of lift hill <laughs> Okay, and uh, yeah, you can see that I've used the four meter method on this section of track here. And if you do that on a hyper or a giga based on the height and the speed, you're going to kill people. Uh, that's a guaranteed. So if we look at your vertical G-forces here, for example, you start to re starting to exert something along the lines of seven, eight, nine, possibly even 10 based on the heat map g's worth of force on people you're going to kill people so this is where uh, you then look at it and go hmm it might be that this four meter method isn't so good for it for a hyper what can i do well it's okay it's fine um i decided to use a mac coaster for this by the way because i've realized that this episode is very bnm heavy uh so instead of using the four meter method you probably guessed it by now you use a slightly bigger method uh so i'll take this out to maybe 10 same principle, so I'm now using 10 meter segments rather than uh, 4 meter segments, but the principle remains exactly the same. I'm still going to build my coaster using a bit by bit method, um, and I'm also going to smooth it in the same way. So I'm still going to select four, four pieces of track at a time, and I'm going to smooth it, but now we're just drawing all of the elements out. So knowing that hypers and gigas tend to go straight into uh, an airtime hill uh, let's put that to the practice so let's go up to the 56 here down to the 45 that's probably going to need one more actually uh, so 56 down to the 45 and the 33 and then two notches two notches two notches and then down to the 45 and the 56 and I mean you can see this is already pretty smooth as it is um, it's not going to need a lot of smoothing it's when you're going to come to the turns that you're really going to need to uh, make some kind of adjustments to it so the the 10 meter the 10 meter method in this instance will work quite well and it gives you those long drawn out airtime hills um, you can still do all of the principles that we did here if you wanted to invert this you could i don't know if you probably would i mean mac coast is a pretty versatile with, with what they can offer a ride experience right so it's not beyond the realms of possibility uh, but now you can see if i turn on the vertical g-forces we're now way kinder on the on the g-forces so we're hitting three to four down here i mean this is probably still even a bit intense but given that the likes of oblivion and whatever give 4.5 it's within tolerance thresholds so this is way better so you can still use the four meter method on hypers and gigas but just remember that you need to extend out what you're what you're doing likewise with turns as well so they everything needs to be drawn out uh, remember your banking um, I don't know if you would even do a, a turn so closely to the bottom based on Interman's uh, reputation on this, but let's just try it anyway. Um, 
So remember though that 22 degrees is probably quite tight for this kind of for this kind of coaster at this kind of speed. Um, like if you look at how tight that how tight that turn is, your lateral g-forces on that are going to be pretty insane. Uh, so this is when you just need to think that everything needs to be uh, not auto calculated. Everything needs to be wine, uh, wider. Um, so you might consider that 11.25 degrees is enough. And then we just move laterals. And if you are in doubt, by the way, your live data and your excitement, fear and nausea will tell you if something's wrong. So if you're making too many quick transitions, then this meter will tell you because your excitement will suddenly shoot up or your fear will suddenly shoot up or your nausea will suddenly shoot up. My one bit of advice, though, is if you're going to use the excitement, fear and nausea ratings on your smaller coasters where you've used the four meter method and you haven't quite uh, smoothed it out just yet, you're going to find that the ratings you're going to get at the top and here are all going to be screwed out anyway because you need to smooth it first. So before you do your final test runs, just make sure that your train makes it round the track and then smooth out the track and make sure that everything is uh, everything is right in terms of there. So guys, that takes us quite nicely to the end of this episode. It'd be interesting to know actually whether you would want a sub-series of specific manufacturers and their elements and the way that they build coasters or are you happy with just this as a, as a, as a four meter principle but either way thank you for coming along for, for the episode thank you to anybody who's going to like and subscribe in advance uh you know what to do i love to, i love chatting to you guys so until next time please look after yourselves please keep please keep yourself safe take care bye bye